fill your thirst beside the river. Wash the journey from your hands. Feel the comfort flow inside you. Come this far, you understand. Hi, welcome to Healing Outside the Box, a show of enlightenment. I am Rosemary Lachance, a spiritual animal healer a spiritual advisor and teacher, and your host for this thought-provoking, food-for-thought show with guest speakers who are experts in their fields of alternative healing, spiritual development, animal welfare, environmental concerns, and so much more. This series is recorded and will be shown in your area on your local public service cable network. Please contact them for dates and times. Please visit my website and click on My TV Show where you will find a wealth of information about this show. These shows are available for you to watch free on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in Healing Outside the Box to make your choices. There are over 250 shows listed. And tonight's show is 258. We are constantly adding new shows, so keep checking back. We are also on Facebook under Healing Outside the Box. Please like our page and get information about new shows. We hope you enjoy the show. Tonight I have with me Dr. Kano. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I have the wrong script. Dr. Julian Kano. Yes, thank you for hiring me. Pardon me? Thank you for hiring me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, Dr. D Kano is a naturopathic doctor and license, licensed acupuncture. He studied at the University of Bridgeport in Connecticut, where he completed his doctorate in naturopathic medicine and a master's degree in acupuncture. His nine years of holistic medicine training included naturopathic philosophies, prevention and treatment of illnesses through natural therapies that include, but are not limited to homeopathy, nutrition, bi bitonical medicine, acupuncture, Chinese formulations, and mind-body medicine. Welcome. So good to have you here. Thank you. Okay, tonight's title of the show, number 258, is about diabetes. It's called Diabetes, Causes, Treatments, and Prevention. I don't know that much about this, so I'm going to leave it to Dr. Kano yeah. to explain everything to you. Okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to ask you questions about it, and the first thing I'm going to say is, what is diabetes? So what diabetes and is... And can I be tested for it? So what diabetes is an issue with metabolized sugar carbohydrates. So there are some population in people that when they eat a sugar or carbohydrates, then I will break it down in little pieces. So when you eat a carbohydrate, your body has the ability to break it down in simple, small pieces. That energy f coming from sugar, it gets transported to the whole body. Now oh. there are some enzymes that most people lack. So in order to digest your carbohydrates, most people think that that digestion happens in the stomach, mm -hmm. but it's not in the stomach, it happens in your mouth. Uh -huh. So when you actually chew slowly, you actually stimulate, stimulate the saliva, and the saliva actually secretes an enzyme. What an enzyme is, a little, it's like a scissors that breaks the carbohydrates oh, into yeah. small pieces mm -hmm. and send it to the small intestine that gets absorbed. Uh, also, there are two hormones that play a huge role in sugar levels. One is insulin and one is uh, glucagon. So the insulin is the one actually balance your sugar when we have a meal. And the second one is gl glucagon that actually do the opposite. So when we skip a meal or we don't eat carbohydrates, your sugar drops. Uh -huh. So the body is very smart and it's okay and it starts to release the insulin, then it releases glucagon and raises the blood sugar levels normal levels oh, okay uh, there are two tests that you can get through your doctor was it just simple fasting glucose now there are two different scales that doctors use one is the conventional scale which they said that the blood sugar levels it should be roughly between 65 and 99 if it's about 99 then your sugar levels will be too high and then holistic mind we have a different numbers a little more narrow what we call optimal levels so the sugar levels should be between 7 and 80 so it's more specific 
So when we eat a meal the night before and then we fast, that number should go, should, shouldn't be go more than 80 or 90. If that number goes than that, then that person have an issue digesting carbohydrates. Okay. The second marker is called hemoglobin 1AC. That marker actually is a calculation of three months or average of three months of sugar intake. And that number is between 5.6 to 2.7. More than 5.7, that's what they call diabetes. Oh. If it's below 5.6, then it's the opposite. You in the more hypoglycemia, which low sugar levels. Mm. And that's what diabetes is all about. Um, what causes diabetes? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. What causes it? Causes diabetes, number one, is eating the wrong carbohydrates. Now, what kind of car carbohydrate we're talking about? We're talking about fast food. Uh, we're talking about starches that comes from pesticides, comes from GMOs, uh, artificial sugar also, like... I don't want to name companies, but anything that has zero calories or sugar-free is loaded, loaded with artificial sugar. Loaded with what? Artificial sugar. Artificial sugar. Ah. So what happens is when you eat that sugar, then the body kind of sense that you are eating sugar. But, it's not sh but the body releases insulin, but the insulin doesn't not see this molecule. Oh. So what happens is when you secrete too much insulin in your diet, then your sugar actually drops. So in order to kind of counteract that, you start eating the more sugar. So you just keep eating sugar, sugar, sugar to kind of replenish the defect. Mm. So it's an addiction, I know Yeah. Uh, another one is heavy metals, like mercury, lead, and aluminum. That also uh, prevents the body to break down carbohydrates into small pieces. Well, that really? Yes. Boy, that's uh, uh, interesting, I never yeah. knew that. Yeah. Another one is, um, besides uh, pesticides, is nutrition deficiencies, like vitamins, like vitamins B, B6, vitamin C, zinc, uh, B6, because in the body, there's uh, also a relationship between the liver and the muscle. The liver and the muscle? Yes. Yeah. There's a circle called the Curie, the Curie cycle, which is the relationship how the liver actually gets the sugar from the muscles to the liver and then vice versa. So when you hypoglycemic or when you actually skip a meal, the liver actually pulls sugar from your liver. The liver pulls it? I mean the body pulls it. The, the liver actually goes to the liver and pulls that sugar because the body has a storage called glycogen. So that glycogen gets stored between the liver and the muscle. So when the liver runs out of that glycogen, it needs another form of sugar. So it goes to the, to the muscle secrete that, the get, take that sugar to the elevate muscles. the sugar levels. Ah. So that's why diabetes type one, most of the people are more skinny, like losing weight, or muscle, muscle weakness, because the muscle getting like, more wasted, mm. all right? That's not good. Yes, and that's why type one, type one is more insulin dependent, which means they need to take insulin after each meal. Uh, if they don't take the insulin after each meal, then the sugar gets a little elevated, and that's causing an issue. Now, what causes type 1 diabetes, one, it could be genetics, right? It could be that maybe your dad has diabetes, or maybe mom has diabetes. That's one hypothesis. The second one, we believe that it's actually a virus or a bacteria that actually attacking the pancreas, because the pancreas is the one that actually secretes insulin. So what happens is the body has cannot distinguish between the virus and the same tissue of the pancreas, something called molecular mimicry. So the body gets confused. So it actually attacks itself or attacks the pancreas. Uh, the third theory is when parents introduce milk, cows milk too early. So what happens is the protein, the albumin, actually causes that molecular mimicry or that attacks the pancreas. So the body cannot distinguish between the albumin and the pancreas. So that's why I call autoimmune condition. Okay, we've got to back up because you give me all yeah, these yeah, answers yeah. and I have questions in yes. between. But I hate to disturb you or break no. up your attention. So what is this virus? Wh wh who, what so the virus could be mumps. Oh. That's one. Another virus called uh, Kasaki virus. Kasaki? Kaksaki. Kaksaki. It's a virus specific that actually ta attacks the pancreas. How does one get something like that? You can get anywhere. This is that thing virus that we get as a child, 
and then it's in the air you say in the air so if your immune system that's why the immune system is so important to stimulate and to control as i said in previous shows because the immune system is the soldiers for the, the immune country system. Yeah, exactly if your immune system is strong then your body will be strong as, as well yeah so when you get these mumps or you get a virus or a bacteria and your body is not strong enough what happens is this virus bacteria gets dormant gets hidden for years and then when something happens like stress the immune system drops and then the virus takes over mm. When we were kids, we got all those diseases. Yes. You know, when I was a child, mm. I got mumps and measles and mm. chicken pox and all that stuff. And we didn't have any medicine for that. And we survived it just yes. fine. Yes. But of course, the food that we ate at those days. It was days, much different, yes. Oh, we never ate fast food. It was always mm -hmm. a home cooked meal and mm -hmm. all the vegetables and the da 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 da. da. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today's lifestyle and working mothers and things like that. Yeah. It's really a shame. And kids, if, if you don't watch them, they grab that stuff, right? They grab yeah. that fast food. And, uh, it was nutritionless. Yeah. And the main, I don't know, the main concept of the risk factor of the food is called high fructose corn syrup. Say it again. High fructose corn oh, syrup. Oh, high fructose corn syrup, yeah. You can see that in every single, like a diet, Pepsi, packaged food, or anything yeah. that you buy, like a packages, they had that ingredient. Now they remove the high fructose corn syrup and rename it fructose. Oh, but it's the same thing? But it's the same thing. So people, oh, when they read boy. that, it's like, oh, I mean, that's fine. But what happens is you can't have too much fructose. Yeah. So I'm going to back up a little bit. When you get a carbohydrate, let's say a piece of bread, that piece of bread has to get break down into simple sugar, glucose. Mm -hmm. That simple glucose has to get turned into energy. Or break down even further. What happens is most people don't have the ability to break down the molecule, so the glucose turns into sorbitol, which is an alcohol. Alcohol? Uh, yes, sorbitol. Anything that ends in OL is an mm -hmm. alcohol, like xylitol. Yeah. It's an alcohol, a sugar alcohol. If you get too much of the alcohol in your system, that causes issues, that causes oxidative damage. And that's one of the causes of diabetes type 3 which is Alzheimer's. Which is the what? Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's? That's a new diabetes type 3. Really? Yes. We diabetes know. type 3 yes. is causes, causes it or is it? What's one of the risk factors? The causes one of the risk that. factors. Yes. But tell people about that one. Because what causes that? Because that? that sorbitol, what it is, it goes through the brain and it damages the nervous system, the nervous system. So if you damage the nervous system, then you cannot communicate your, neur your neurons right. correctly. Right. You see, the thing I problem I have with doctors is that they give you medicine and they say themselves that I don't treat the body I treat the symptoms yeah. but they don't tell people how to eat what yes. to eat and so forth no. never they they don't consider diet an important part no. I think diets everything yes don't if, you yes if you eat the right carbohydrate right at the right moment you'll be fine it's like one of these philosophers Lauren Tomego says the dose makes the poison you can eat a liberal carbohydrate it's fine but if, for example, a piece of bread. Yeah. If you take a piece of bread, like, same size, like I said, that size, rectangular, one piece, very tiny. What? Yeah. Like the same size, like tiny. You mean like a piece of American bread? Yes, one piece. <laughs> it will not kill you. <coughs> if you eat a piece of sourdough, it's not going to kill you. Right. But if you eat the whole bread, that's an issue because it's an overload for your system. Right. So it's the dose that makes the poison. If you eat too much, that's an issue. So, I mean, what you're saying, like whole grain breads, sourdough breads, sprouted breads, they're much better for you than yes. American bread, which yes. everybody eats, right? Yes, which White I will bread. talk about more in detail why okay, the difference. Yeah, good, okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, you would think if they if they knew this about the Alzheimer's, they would start treating people, telling yes. people what to do, yes. but they don't. No, because what it is, is they have a disease and they have a medication. Yeah. So they say, oh, okay, let's get the medication to see if it works. But what happened, most of the medications is just a patch in the hole. It's not actually yeah. curing the root cause of diabetes. It's just controlling or managing the diabetes. And most of the times, those medications actually damage the livers and the kidney. Mm. And then you get a lot of more side effects with those medications. And you have to have pills for that and pills exactly. for this, and pretty soon you just die. Yes. Too much medication. Exactly. Go on. And the doctors don't 
can't do anything about it, and the pharmaceutical companies are pushing their medicines. Yeah. <laughs> what a world. Yeah. It isn't bad enough without all this, uh, yeah. too, now. Oh, my God. So that's type one. Uh, type right. two is more related to 100% diet, which means... It's the 100% diet, diet, okay. Which means when you overeat the wrong carbohydrate, or let's say corn or sweet corn, or for example, pota white potato versus a sweet potato, that white potato has, even though it has too much carbohydrates or too much starch, that has way too much, it actually affects your sugar levels more than the sweet potato. Uh, a term called glycemic low and glycemic index. Isn't that weird? Because mm -hmm. it's a sweet potato yes. versus a non-sweet. Because going back to the term glycemic index yeah. and the glycemic low, a glycemic index is a number that it tells you if the particular food actually elevates the sugar or not. The glycemic low tells you how much starch or how much carbohydrates the particular food has. So white potato has high glycemic index and high glycemic low. And sweet potato, even the sweet, has low glycemic index and high glycemic low. So when you eat sweet potato, the sweet potato does not elevate that much the sugar levels. Kind of blunt sweet sugar. A white potato or corn elevates the sugar way too much. Corn? So when you keep eating that all the time, then the pancreas releases the insulin, and then the insulin says, wait, I can break down too much carbohydrates, and that's what's called insulin resistance. So the body's become resistant to the insulin because you overload your overload with yeah. carbohydrates. So, and they say to change the diet, what they do is, oh, let me give you medication to kind of suppress the sugar, but it's not addressing the underlying cause, which is the wrong carbohydrates. Right. Yeah. And that glycemic index, glycemic low, you can get it through the website, to the United States Department of Agriculture.org. Okay. And all the tables there. It tell you which foods are low glycemic index, which foods have low glycemic low, and how to do. Same thing with bread. Sourdough versus white, white bread. Multigrain versus... White uh, bread. <laughs> white bread. <laughs> it's all refined. Yeah. Fine. Bread. Yeah. Any, yeah, right. Any refined yeah. breads. But mm -hmm. The rest of them are good. You are what you eat, they say. Yes. And it's true. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's amazing. So we need a really well-balanced diet. Yes. Can't stay with it all the time. And that's why one of the myths is, oh, if you diet, you can eat carbohydrates, you can eat sugar. Nah, let's back it up. Let's talk about what kind of carbohydrates are you eating. Yeah. What kind of food are you getting from? Are you eating the right sugar? Like, let's talk about something to honey versus all the sugars that you get in the market, or like juice or whatever you can get it. Juices are really high in sugar, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it's so much fructose. Yeah, they give p kids juice all the time and yeah. think they're giving something good, but it's really, yeah. really, really high in sugar. Versus honey. Honey is just yeah. natural, organic, and it has oil, uh, medicinal values. Right, and there's the other one too, the... Um, Manuka honey. No, but there's another, um, I have it at home, I can't even think it. They have an amber, they have it, what is that other sweetener? Um, low glycemic sweetener. It it's looks like honey. No, it, it looks like honey. It's agave? Agave. Agave. Now, the thing with agave, you have to be very careful because now they know that people are eating agave. So now they modify the agave. So you need to buy agave that's organic, non-GMO. They modified it? The same thing with stevia. Stevia has to be organic and non-GMO. Because otherwise, if it's just not like regular stevia, it happens like the same thing. When you put in your coffee and your drink, you buy things that you're eating sugar, but you're not eating sugar. So you're tricking your brain. Uh, and then that's why the cycle comes. That's why the addiction comes. Or I Diet Coke, Diet, diet Pexa. Uh, Pexi. Diet Cokes and Diet anything? Pexi, yes. It has extra sugar. Even though it has zero calories, there's a lot of sugar on it. It's not supposed to be sugar. No, exactly. But it is. Yes. And they don't, do they write it in there? Is it yeah, disguised? Yeah, when you read the English, it tell you one of the chemicals called aspartamate. Yeah. And that's artificial sugar. Oh, my God. So people don't read the labels. No. No. They just eat whatever is cheap, the more cheaper food sources or whatever it is. And why did they do that to the agave? Why did they, why did they change it? Same thing that they're doing with soy and corn. Yeah, that's all GMO, right? I try to tell people that if it's not organic, it's it's got it's GMO, yeah. genetically modified. They don't believe nothing. Pesticides, believe. herbicides affects your sugar, yeah. also. Can you get organic? Um, what do you call it? Um, 
Splenda or Stevie or anything like that stuff? No, that's the, no, you can't get it. You can't that's get it. That's definitely artificial. So you're better off to eat sugar. Yes. Or honey. Honey. Or brown sugar. Brown sugar. Or another one called molasses. Oh, yeah. Molasses is the emperor of the cane sugar. But it's, it's a very thick. Very strong uh, taste. Yeah, because it's very, because it's, it's bitter. Yeah, people But like that it. does not ever elevate your sugar levels. Even though it's thick, does not arise as your sugar levels. It kind of stays in the same way. All right, now what about the artificial sweetener? You know, the the ones, the people who are a diabetic use it. Mm. Like, um, what what are you, the, the one, the pink package. I don't even know what they are. Like NutraSweet. NutraSweet and all those. Because they think that, oh, I'm eating this thing that is no sugar on it. It's just alternative sugar. But what they don't know is actually tricking the body that actually you're eating sugar, but you're not. So the more you eat this fake sugar, your body or your pancreas keeps secreting insulin to that point that actually it's gonna drop your sugar levels. When your sugar levels drops, then you crave for sweet or you crave for a carbohydrate. Because the body will, it's my, it's, it will tell you, hey, my sugar is going low, you, you need food, or it releases cortisol. The cortisol, that cortisol. Hor which is a stress hormone. Yeah. So when you stress, believe it or not, causes the cortisol to secrete it and elevate your sugar levels as well. So stress causes diabetes as well. That's why when somebody's diabetic and they're having an attack, I see it in the movies and pictures, they give them, give them sweets, they eat this candy bar, I gotta eat this candy, my sugar. Yes. Yeah. I'm well, going, why are they feeding him that? Because otherwise your sugar drops below 60 right, but I and mean, you will pass out. Yeah, you don't, you think that it wouldn't happen, that wouldn't yeah. happen, you would think, yeah. you know? And most, there's some medical society that believe that we don't need carbohydrates, that the body doesn't need it. We have fats and proteins changing to sugar. Right. That's all right, but we know when you, you upload tests, what they're testing is how much sugar you got in, in your blood. If you don't eat, either you faint, you get lightheaded, you get dizzy, you get shaky, you get night sweats, or you start sweating, palpitations, which is signs symptoms of diabetes. Your freaking urination, uh, thirst, and most people don't. Diabetes is one of, one of those diseases that is actually misdiagnosed until it becomes more dangerous. So it actually takes 10 years to get sick. Wow. To get diabetes, you don't get that overnight. You get, it takes 10 years. 10 right. years of damage, 10 years of eating the wrong food, 10 years just not following your diet correctly. All right, so those things, the, the um, frequent urination mm. and uh, what did you say? Um, Thirst. Thirst and all that can't they? They they also can be symptoms of other things, right? Yes, and that's so why you need tricky. to work out, and it, that's why that's why those illnesses that's very misdiagnosed because they just don't know, they don't see the whole picture. They start breaking diseases down. Ah, oh, you don't fit this diabetes. You might have something else. Yeah, and that's why nowadays, one or three, one or three, is diagnosed with diabetes. Really. One out of three. Years ago, it was one in a hundred, one out of ten, one out of twenty. Now it's one out of three, which is, if it were ten people here, one third will be half diabetes. And that's because of the way that people eat today. Yes, because of the food, because of their environment. And people, when they get those, when they get uh, their physicals every year, they get the blood tested for sugar, right? And what I notice is when they get the blood test, doctors don't really pay attention to the test. They just look the number and then moving on. The way I interpret my, when patients bring the blood work to me, I actually dissect each single individual number individually and pay attention where the number is, like glucose levels. For them, if it's more than 90, then you have an issue. For me, if it's more than 80, you're going to end that diabetes. So we need to do something now, and that's why what I do. I, take that number and I prevent to get even more further. And that's why the system's failing because they don't care about the number. Right. The, that's what naturopaths care about, stopping the disease. Yes. Uh, about, about what, what was I gonna say today? You, you uh, wanna catch it before it gets bad. Yes. Where doctors, it's a whole different story there. They just say, watch and wait. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I don't. If I see a number a little slightly than why my numbers, let's, change your diet, let's stop the progression of the illness, 
and preventing for right. further Right, and you damage. can do it with diet. Yes, not diet. with medicine. Yeah, with diet. side effects. Diet. Diet is number one. Yeah, that's it. Play. If the diet is not enough, then that's what the supplements come in play. But you always go diet first. But you, you give drink. natural supplements, so it doesn't yes. have side effects. Exactly, by vitamins, minerals. Yeah, right. I don't know. People, though, they think the doctor is God, and whatever they say that mm. they do, they don't look any further than that. It's not only that; it's they don't listen to the patient. They yeah. Just, you go to the doctor. They wait for two hours, <laughs> then five minutes to speak with the doctor and call it a day. I when know. they come to my office, they spend at least half an hour talking with me, and I just let the patient talk. Like, okay, tell me what's going on. Right. And then just go backwards. How, what do you do to get to this point? I don't know. That and, and of course, the uh, government makes it really difficult because they don't recognize, the insurance companies don't recognize you. Yeah. And that makes it hard for people. Yes. Very hard. Because yes. I know a lot of people who would go to Nature Pass, but they, they're not yeah. covered. Yeah. And that is a shame. And that's how the, the pharmaceutical companies stay in business. Yes. And I'm sorry, folks, but that's the truth. And the doctors, but that don't matter to them. Yeah. Uh, the next one will be diabetes type. Uh, you, you, did, you did one and, and you did we'll one. Do diabetes type one, two, and three. Yeah. The another one is called gestational diabetes pregnancy when a woman gets pregnant. Okay. And if the woman does not get a good diet, then they get diabetes. So if you don't fix the diabetes, then that gets passed on. On the offspring to the children. Yes. Yeah. So, if the mom gives birth, probably it's one of those questions, and you give birth to a low weight baby, like less than nine pounds. Less than nine pounds. Yes. What happens is, inside the body is a chemical called nitric oxide. That that chemical actually controls the vessels. It can actually dilate okay. or controls how elasticity your vessels is. So those babies that burn under nine pounds, they're lacking that chemical. So what happens is as they grow older, then the vessels doesn't get very elastic or they get a little narrow. And that's one of the risk factors of get diabetes in kids. Something called juvenile diabetes. Yeah, my children were both seven pounds two yes. and seven five. Mm -hmm. And so we thought that that was nice. I mean, yeah. how could you make the baby get fatter? I mean, how, by eating more? Then eating you would get more, fat. Eating more the right fat, the right carbohydrates. Oh, eating the right things, yes, yeah. Yes, the right things. Then you weigh, it's going to get a little higher. Nowadays, which is... <coughs> they worry in, about in that. They don't want you to take it weight. <coughs> yeah. Nowadays, now you have a formula. If formula. you don't have, like right now it's happening, like people uh, are going crazy by a formula. This? Going crazy about If you breastfed your kid for a year, right. that kid's going to be fine. Right. Most of moms don't breastfeed kids. What kind of moms? Most, most of them, most yeah. of them, they don't. Yeah, fit. and they work. Yes, they they're work. Too busy. Got to have so much money. They're gotta too work. stress. Yep. And the stress, what it does is prevents the milk production, and that's why they don't get breastfed, and that's one of the issues. If you breastfeed your kid up to a year, that kid is gonna be healthy. Right. And we see that most people or most kids they don't get breastfed. They will have allergies as they grow up. They will have asthma or they have eczema. Now, there are other things they can take if they don't have formula, right? Yeah. I mean, formula. There's other yeah. combinations. I mean, when, we, when my babies were little, you could, you, you could give them like a, the, the canned milk and all this and mix it with the water and da da da, yeah. certain things. So it didn't have to be the formula that people no. are going crazy about. I remember when I grew up, um, I used to, my mom used to give me um, plantain soup. What is it? Plantain. Plantain. The, uh, that's a banana. Uh, the same formula, but it's different. It's is the green. The, what? This is the green one, but yeah, then it's right. yellow. That one's green. That was my formula. That was your formula. Yeah. They had no, they had no sources to get like expensive formulas. Whatever is in the house, and that's what they get. That's fed right. to the kids. Yeah. And they turn out well. People just don't know enough about anything. They no. were very programmed. They just trust whatever they see on the TV. Yeah. On regular TV. Right. Or regular propaganda. That's what they trust or they trust whatever is in Google or whatever it is, those sources. I know, they do. I got a lot of patients come to my office and then they just argue back and forth and say, oh, I heard it in Google or I heard it in the internet. <laughs> I love that saying. But again, it's who's Google, who's the internet. Yeah, and do they care about you, you know, and who's yeah. running them and who's telling them to do this? Exactly. On and on and on, I know. Yeah. Every th I love this, the saying, 
oh, I heard it on the news. It's mm -hmm. got to be true. Yeah. Ay, ay, ay. So that's why I educate patients that, okay, this is what it is. This is how you do it. You need to change your diet. You need to eat the right carbohydrates at the right time and at the wrong time. Most people eat too late or yeah. people's binge eating. Or what? Binge eating. Binge eating, yeah. Yes. And then the people who are actually addicted to sweets. Yes. What makes a person addicted to sweets? So when you eat the wrong sweet, yeah. right? Well, we're talking the wrong the, sweets. Yeah. The body will take it. And then it sees that sweet like as a toxic. Uh. So in other words, an addiction to food is actually a toxicity issue. You be, your body is becoming toxic. So too much toxin in your body actually makes more of this fake sugar to actually control that toxicity. Once you detoxify that toxicity or you stay or you start eating that wrong carbohydrates, that's why you get uh, the withdrawal effects. The what? Withdrawal, withdrawal effects. Effect. Yes, that yeah. like you start feeling Ex. weird because you actually detoxify the toxins. And it's a chemical called the AGES, A-G-E. A-G-H, yeah. Which is called advanced glycation end products. So what it is, is when you eat this wrong sugar or too much sugar, that sugar actually binds with the protein and that forms the glycation, like a toxicity or oxidative damage. When the oxidative damage gets too much resistant, that's why it causes the issues, causes the addictions, it goes to the brain, affects your brain. It goes to your eyes and that causes um, blindness or yeah, uh, uh. issues with your vision. That's why diabetes gets uh, retina yeah. issues. Yeah. Uh, they get full ulcers because again, those toxicities or that toxic chemicals goes to the arteries, actually clots and prevent circulation. Ugh. So that's why you don't feel, if you step in, in the nail, they don't feel the nail because there's no sensation. So what happens is a bacteria goes there and if you don't pay attention, you pr it's not gonna heal, you get an ulcer and that's why they get amputation. Oh it's boy. because they cannot feel sensation in the legs because of the same wrong sugar or the artificial sugar. So when people can't stay away from sweets, when they're addicted, it's, it's, it, or, or I'm going to say when, when you stop, well, let me put it this way. If you stop, you try to get away from them, then you're actually um, detoxifying, right? Mm -hmm. And that, when you detoxify, it's hard. Yes. And once you introduce that food, then your body don't like it. Actually, we reject yeah, it. Yeah, right. But I mean, I know people who got to have to have yeah. sweets. And most of the times in addiction or when they like sweet, it's a mineral deficiency. A mineral deficiency. Lacking a mineral. Uh, and those two minerals are at chromium and vanadium. Yeah. And chromium you can get it in cinnamon. Oh yeah. Yeah. I when you sprinkle cinnamon and you are in your oatmeal, you yeah. actually get in chromium. Oh that's nice. Those two elements or minerals actually stimulate your pancreas to release insulin naturally. I had low blood sugar once because I was very, very stressed yeah. over something. And Dr. Sensnick, when he was alive, put me on chromium. And I've been yeah. taking it ever since. Yeah, because chromium is one of those minerals that actually yeah. helps insulin. Yeah, release. it's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, people just, uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a sick world. Yeah. And, and that's they could why fix it, but they, they don't believe it. It's not that they don't believe it. They just want a quick Inconvenient. fix. Yeah. They want a okay. quick fix. You're right. They You're don't right. want to put the work on it. Yeah. I have a lot of patients, oh, I have this issue. What do I do? Okay, let's change the diet. No, I don't want to change the diet because I don't have time to cook. Okay, so let's give me, let me give you a supplement. Oh, the supplement is too expensive. I can't afford it. What <laughs> else do you have? Like, okay, let's do acupuncture. Oh, the needles, I don't like the needles. So, I, I, like, what Go. do you want? Exactly, what do you want? Like, <laughs> yeah. I give you the choices and they just want something quick. Like yeah, that's what they do. The doctor gives them, here's yeah. a pill. Take this until you get the terrible side effects. Yes. And I'll give you another pill exactly. to, for those side effects. And yeah. then when they get bad, I'll give you another pill for those side effects until you're taking 10 pills a day and then you die. Like I tell the patients, healing takes time. It's like yeah. a roller coaster. There's one time you're gonna go up and you're gonna go down. But it never is a linear. Healing is never just a linear. Never linear. Yeah. It's always up and down. Yeah. And most people don't understand that. No, they don't. They don't understand. They don't want it. Just like you said, a quick fix. That's yeah. what I want. And right. that's why they want the pills. Yeah. That's it. That's why they want it. What a shame. What a shame. Um, so 
They say that African, Hispanic, Latino, American Indian, Alaskan, Pacific Islander, they say they're all at high risk for, uh, for uh, uh, diabetes. Is that true? Mostly. Any any ethnicity, any race can get diabetes. Any race, so yes. they're not like a standout or anything no. like that. Can get it. And the reason maybe they say because if someone comes from outside the United States and they come here and they and they switch the diet and they're eating the diet here, they might get diabetes. It's not actually the race or ethnicity; it's the food that you actually get from here. From here, yeah. Because there's a lot of toxins, a lot of chemicals, pesticides, yeah, artificial they do. colors, um, additives. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All those things. Refined, they don't know. People yeah. don't like to say they don't read labels. They yeah. don't see what's in there. Refined. Yeah. Uh, which brings me to why people say, oh, if I had diabetes, then let's do a different diet. Like different diet, like, oh, let's do my calories in there. Let's count calories. What is it? Count calories like uh, let me be in a restriction calories. Colors? Calories. Oh, calories. Yes. Let's say uh, calories is just a number, but most people are actually counting. What yeah, they, they are. Like oh, yeah. The body doesn't have a machine inside. They actually call numbers. They don't care. <laughs> your body actually cares about the nutrient. Yeah. How dense, how the nutritional density or how well your nutrients is versus the number. So if you Let's say you go to the store and say, oh, I want to buy this that has like 10 calories. If you take a look at the ingredients, the ingredients is ingredients, way yeah. too much worse than actually the number, which people are caring more about the quantity versus quality. The quantity is like a, how much am I going to eat about the number right. versus the quality of the food. Right. For example, a refined flour versus whole flour is a big difference. You can get uh, a gluten-free flour, yeah. but if that flour is refined, it has low calories, but the way they made the flour is actually synthetic uh -huh. versus a whole grain. As so as you know, the flour comes from the little grain. So what they do is they take the grain, they open the grain, they remove everything from inside, they enrich the grain with additives. With what? With additives. additives. So when you look at the of the ingredients or packages, yeah. and it says enrich, don't eat that. That's fake. <coughs> okay. But that's what they do. They remove what is inside yeah. the grain the goodness, yeah. with artificial things to enrich it. Oh, I'm going to add vitamin A or make it a little more yeah. better. Why when whole grains has it by nature? So that's one of the mistakes what people do is just they just care about the number, but they don't, go, they don't care about the quality of the food. Now, a lot of people are getting are high, um, gluten intolerant. Yes. And, of course, I heard that it was because that they put extra gluten in the wheat now. Yes. That's what it is, you know. Yes. And uh, if, like I said, I think I said this before, uh, if you go to Europe, like, say, Italy. It's different. The different kind of wheat. It's yeah. semolina, and yeah. they don't do that, and it, you, people don't have a problem. Yeah. I didn't. All right, and, and I buy Italian mm -hmm. pasta and things like that, so made in Italy, so yeah. I don't have that problem. But why why is it? Is, I mean, is that the, the real reason, that the only reason they, they become that way? If you take regular bread. Regular bread? Like Wonder Bread. Wonder let's, Bread. Let's, let's <laughs> Wonder Bread. <laughs> that bread, when you read the English, has more than six. It has so many things on it, so much crap on it, too much artificial gluten. So as you know, gluten, the word gluten means glue. It glues glue. things together. But at the same time, if you eat that gluten for a long period of time, actually damage your small intestine. Jeez. And cause your leaky gut syndrome, which we can talk about more in the next show. Uh, versus something like sourdough. Sourdough is only for in ingredients. Salt, water, and flour. Yeah. And, and the starter, that's it. I've seen, I, I eat sourdough and I see there's only a few ingredients. Exactly. So I always tell the patients, if you cannot pronounce what you read, <laughs> don't eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> if true. you count the ingredients more than five, don't eat that food. It's nice. It's, it's not good. I've picked up things and I've seen a list like this. Yes, yeah, so Why the? I said, I'm, I'm not even going to read yeah. that and put it back. <laughs> and that's what causes illnesses because they added too much things. Things on it. 
and that overloads the pancreas and overloads the insulin and so the insulin is like wait you give me too much starch i cannot able to break it down and that's what causes diabetes the wrong starch or the wrong food that's unbelievable so what what you know what are they what are they gonna do i mean uh does it cause any other health problems? Oh yeah, uh, not only affects your eyes, doesn't affect your circulation, but also affects uh, your um, causes hypertension. Hypertension. Now, most people they don't see the connection between eating the wrong carbohydrates and hypertension. They don't make connection. When they go to the doctor, the doctors tell you, oh, there's no connection with hypertension. Now here's the connection between wrong carbohydrates or diabetes and hypertension. When you eat, when you eat the wrong carbohydrate or run sweet. The glucose is, is not able to break down into what I said before into small molecules. So it gets converted into sorbitol or fructose. When that chemical, when those gets to accumulate in your system, that becomes too toxic. And that toxicity actually overstimulates the white blood cells in the, of the immune system. When you secrete too much white blood cells in your system, actually it goes to the endothelial cell, which is the wall of your arteries. The wall of the artery, yeah. And it causes inflammation. Oh. So if that causes inflammation, of course your arteries, in be, to be like this, is gonna be narrow. Mm. And that's why high blood pressure always correlates with diabetes. High blood pressure, yes. wow. So instead to give you a pill for high blood pressure, let's manage or change your diet to fix the chemical, the toxicity, or the ages that you sent me for, and give antioxidants, blueberries, blackberries, green tea. Because the antioxidants, what it does is actually prevents the oxidative damage. It prevents the damage of your arteries, or the right. eyes, or your circulation. Yeah. And most people don't eat good antioxidants. Simple yeah. green tea, like blueberries, black, uh, blackberries. Then you, then there's the other thing. The fruit, if it's not organic, it's sprayed with pesticides. Exactly. And blueberries and strawberries and all the berries that I love goes right into it. It's, like, it's not like a melon where it's on the outside yeah. you can wash it or an orange or an apple mm. or things like that. It penetrates. You've got to buy organic. And that's the side part of the history because most people can't afford organic right. fruit. So what it says is, okay, if you can't afford it, then at least watch your fruits with apple cider vinegar or soak it with apple cider vinegar. Soak it in there, yeah. yeah. At least that acidity of the vinegar kind of actually cleans the fruits a little bit. It's better than nothing. Right. That's a very cheap way to wash your fruits. Apples, also the same thing. Or you can just peel the apple and it just... What like about it. like the berries? Can will it, will it help to get it out of, out of the berries, the apple cider vinegar? That too, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Since I love berries, but uh, I know that the, the it's in there, so yeah. I don't eat them. Mm -hmm because of that, unless I find organic somewhere. Sometimes yeah. I give in to that. But yeah, quite a bit more money. People but can't afford it. Now we're expensive. Years ago, it was cheap because it was more for the farm. Yeah. So we're going backwards. Always. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. So, um, you know, this surprises me. I'm, I'm looking at this saying that the, the new diet, Diabetes, Alzheimer's is the new diabetes type three. Yeah. That really, really. I will say it will take me. roughly ten more years until the mainstream doctors say yes, it's a sugar issue. Ten years? Not why doctors. We say it for years, years and years. I never heard of it. But we said it for years that the new diabetes type three, because again, if the sugar or the sorbitol gets too accumulated, actually damage the Brain. nervous system. Yes. And causes issues. It causes that prevent or the nervous system to act normally. Shame on them that they yes. don't check this out. Shame on them that they put these people through this awful thing. Mm -hmm. Shame on them. I mean, sugar, like again, sugar is good, but if you use the wrong one, you're going to travel 10 to 20 years from now. Because again, it takes 10 years, 20 years to get sick, to show the symptoms. Well, they have this thing they call natural sugar. It's brownish. Exactly, but what's natural? Yeah. Is organic or just natural just to persuade the population that it's natural? Right. 
So sometimes when I read the labels and they say, oh, we put, it has a natural flavors on it. I don't eat that because the food has the flavor. So what are you going to add something natural to the food right. when the food is actually the ingredients? Right. So I'm very skeptical when it's just natural versus organic. Now you have to go even further to say where they get the food organically. So organic sugar is oh, is better, better, right? Yes. Than the plain white sugar. Yes, like cane sugar, organic cane, cane sugar. sugar yeah. It's much much better better than white sugar or artificial sugar. Organic cane sugar. Yes. Yeah. Then the white sugar you get in the big pound bags. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm. And they sell it. Cost a lot like more candy. though. Yes, and they like kind of like syrup, maple so, syrup. Yeah. Versus regular syrup, Ooh, it's totally different because there's only one ingredient. You just take syrup from the maple. That's it. If it's real maple syrup. Yeah, there's one ingredient. You syrup. But versus all this crap that you see in always syrup. That's why it causes diabetes. It's not the sugar. It's just what type of sugar are you eating? What type of carbohydrates are you eating? Don't blame sugar, don't blame the carbohydrates. Just blame where you're getting from or what type of carbohydrates are you eating. Because these, these syrups you buy, Aunt Jemima's and exactly. and, and all those fructose corn syrup. Yeah, that's the main one. High fructose corn syrup, that's the number one causes of sugar issues. Yeah. And maple syrup, real maple syrup, the price is out of sight. Yeah. But See? I it's know. Because there's only one thing I use syrup. Same thing with butter. Yeah. I have a patient last week brought me a butter like, oh, that, I brought this, it says 100% butter is so good. When I read the English to him, I said, look, it has soybean oil, oh. it has hydrogen oil, it has all this stuff. It has like seven, ten ingredients. I said, listen, a butter only have two ingredients, cream and salt. And he was crushing the head like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's how you make butter. Cream, cream and salt. salt. <laughs> it's just people don't know how to buy or how to read the labels. Yeah, how to read the labels. Because one, they pay attention to the calories or they pay attention to crazy diets like, oh, I'm on my paleo diet or in my oil diet, I'm allowed to eat that. It just, diet just doesn't fit all. And most of the time it doesn't work. Most diets count calories. Exactly. And most of the time it doesn't work. And that doesn't work, no. Mm. You can't, it's, it's really hard to, to stay on those kinds of diets. Yeah. And what happens is when you stop eating, once you stop that diet, then your body relapse or you want to gain yeah. the weight as much more. Because again, you're addressing the symptom, but you're not addressing the underlying cause of the diabetes. Symptom, and yeah. that's why diets don't work. They're just temporary effects. I don't know, what are people to do? You know? They have to, I mean, they have to go, they have to question the doctors. That's why I tell patients, when you go to your doctor, make sure you ask these questions to them. But they don't ask know them, the answers. Yeah, they just come to me like, they don't know. It's like, why you keep going to the same doctor? Find somebody else. They don't have to come to me all the time. Just find somebody else, do all your research. There are great primary doctors out there, but you have to do your research. Yeah. They are there. They're right? out they're there, few. yeah. They're few, you have to do your research. You're right. You have to. Th there's so many doctors too. If a doctor does not address your diet, then you have to switch the doctor. I noticed that I know someone's going through a cancer problem, and I noticed that the doctor calls. Uh, you have to eat a good rounded meal, meat and potatoes and vegetable. That's not a diet. That's yeah. not you know. That's nothing. That that won't help. Hurt, help right. No. But if the doctor says, oh, let's, let's put some sweet potatoes here, let's put some or ingredients in your plate, that's different. But you cannot just say that and then call it a day because it's not holy bread. Plus, they're not saying organic, which I think that a person exactly. has cancer should eat organic yeah. all the time. And most people don't believe that organic actually helps. No, they don't. Uh, they don't. Also, doctors don't believe our toxicity. They don't believe heavy metals. They don't believe no. there's actually lead toxicity. There's mercury toxicity. They don't believe there's actually aluminum toxicity. They're done. Those heavy metals, believe it or not, actually prevents your body to metabolize or break down your carbohydrates. Yeah. So I know. That's they don't even tell them that they have to eat organic. Yeah. Person with cancer has to eat organic all the yeah. time. They don't tell them that either. Yeah. They don't tell them anything about diet. 
So to give you medicine to get rid of it. Yeah. But you eat the stuff and put it right back in again. Mm -hmm. And when you take it, the medicine actually fills your liver and your kidneys. Right. Once your liver starts getting toxic, there's no medication they know that actually regenerates the liver. There's supplements and diets that actually regenerates the liver. Yeah. The, uh, medication? That. Um, milk thistle. What is it? Milk thistle. Yeah, milk and thistle. Artich artichokes actually helps the liver. Artichokes? It's it hard helps. to get any much out of an artichoke, though. Yes. You know, you but have to eat a lot, and they're not very yeah. good anymore. Yeah. But I, I know milk thistle is great, and yes. I have that at home. And sometimes it does clean the liver. Yeah. And sometimes you change the diet to get a little break of your liver. You what? Not change your diet. Take a break. Take a break? Yeah, and don't eat too much. Because <laughs> <laughs> what happens people eat too much? They're always stressed. Eating, they're eating in the car or they're rushing to eat eating. They don't have to, in order you to eat, you need to be calm and relaxed in order to digest your food. Right. That's why grandmas or older people says you need to chew your, your food 10 times. Yeah. There's a reason. Because again, that used to happen in your mouth, especially for carbohydrates. If you chew slowly, then your body is able to break that carbohydrates even You're better. Right. So when it goes to the small intestine, then it's better. You need yes, you do need to chew a lot. They they eat too fast. Like I said, the stress the stress, like I said, it releases cortisol. Too much cortisol causes your sugar to elevate. Cortisol. Yes. All right. So what is that? A cortisol is a hormone that the adrenal glands produce. Is um it's a straight hormone. So when you stress, your adrenal actually releases that hormone to the bloodstream to reduce your sugar levels. When you release it too much, then your adrenals gets too tired. Uh -huh. Then eventually it's going to shut down. So, uh, and the term is called adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue, huh? And when that causes, then you're going to feel fatigued, you're going to be tired, you cannot get up in the morning, and then uh, later on night, then you get hyper because your cortisol gets flipped. Oh, really? Yes. Also, for females, uh, when they get the period of the menses, the estrogen also causes a slight elevation of or sugar levels as well. Ah. And that's why when the time comes, they crave for sweets. They crave sweets, yeah. And that's the connection. Patients say, why am I eating, eating sweets when I'm in my period? Because your estrogen, which is a hormone, actually increases that blood sugar levels. And it's a craving sugar. <laughs> oh, our bodies betray us. So the body is smart. You just need to understand how the body works, and we still figure out how the body works. So we have to fight with our body, not eat the sugar, or can we have a substitute? A substitute. What? Change the sugar. And instead, for example, instead to eat, let's say, if you want to eat a chocolate bar. Yeah. Make sure that chocolate bar is like at least seventy percent or eighty percent dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Versus. Milk chocolate. Like regular chocolate. Like milk, milk, milk chocolate. Yeah, that's better. It tastes it's, better though, milk chocolate. Yeah. And that's why people do. Exactly, but the one seven eight percent um, ch dark chocolate is better because not it will not elevate the sugar that much. Uh. And this chocolate has more antioxidants, more beneficial value than the other chocolate. Yeah, I, I read there's something actually good in dark chocolate yeah. for you. Yeah, the cacao has good value, has more beneficial, but it has to be at least 70, 80 percent. It has to be non-refined. It has to be as a whole bean. So what do you do if you want a piece of cake or a cupcake, cookies? Is there anything that can belay mm. that? Then you have to somehow change that behavior and replace it with something healthier. In other words, you have to train your body or rewire your brain and change to something good, something bad. So you have to force, say, okay, if I want this cupcake, I need to replace this cupcake with a more organic or better cupcake or gluten-free cupcake gluten-free or better because that's a behavior you just your body goes to the bad and it's just a reward system so you have to kind of go backwards and you change it it's hard but it's doable well you know what we've only got a couple minutes left so oh is there any last things that you want to say to the our audience tonight i mean uh, the last thing is Diabetes can be treatable. It can be preventable. Uh, if you read the ingredients and pay attention to what you eat, what you put uh, in the table for your kids, 
then diabetes can be preventable. Now that 100%. we now that we know all the things it can cause, yes. I never knew that. Yes. Wow. Yeah, like if I have say. more time, I, I, I have more stuff, but I can talk more of, about that. I know. That's uh, a little one piece. I know. There's uh, much more. Ours is, yeah. doesn't seem to be long, and yeah. it went by so fast. Yes. Sometimes I think, gee, I'm not gonna, I don't think we're going to have enough to talk about. Yeah. Not true. <laughs> so bottom line is stress is number one. You need to somehow deal with stress better. Number two, if you eat wrong carbohydrate, that's the main the wrong issue. carbohydrate, yeah. Exactly. The wrong sugar. That's you got to have the, the good one. carbohydrates. Yes. Yep. I know, and you can find that out. Yeah. If you go on the internet to look up, you know, how to, all these other things that they tell yeah. you what to do, look up good carbohydrates. Look up yeah. the right things, right? And find like I said, you can go to the United States, the USDA, yeah. United States Department of Agriculture, org, and they give you a whole list of foods that has low glycemic index and low glycemic low. There you go. And okay. that's a good start. There you go. There you go now. He told you what to do. Yeah. Nothing's going to stop you. You want to get well better without medicine? You want to get Alzheimer's? Uh -huh. Okay. Thank All you, right. Doc. Oh, thank it's you for having me. It's been a wonderful me. pleasure. Oh, no, it's always a pleasure to have you on the thank show. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll give our contact information. For me, phone number is 203-627-7966. Our chance 01 at Comcast.net is my email www.rosemarylachance.com is my website and a very wonderful website www.gabrielle-publishing-house.com is a website for spiritual spirituality everything you would like to know about that which helps calm us down okay dr cano email drcanond at gmail.com his website is www drcano.net telephone number is 203-606-0224 well thank you for joining us thank you doctor again thank you for it's always me. a pleasure and we'll see you next time take care take care fill your thirst beside the river wash the journey from your hands Feel the comfort flow inside you Come this far, you understand